So let's actually add a document for Ted, because I'm in here, but Ted's not. So we click Add Document, then I click Auto ID, and we said things like age, which Ted is 21. Again, Still. Again tw it's, his, it's his 30th anniversary of being 21. Congratulations, Thank Ted. You. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And then field, uh, name, and we will say Ted. Uh, the other ones we you had. Order these fields as you enter them, it make any difference. Yeah, it actually doesn't matter what order you put them in there. Points, we'll give Ted 10,000 points. Oh, or nine, let's do 9,999 points. So Ted is beating me by a lot. We'll say, Ted, have you graduated yet? For this course, not yet. No, we'll say false here too. And then we'll say Ted joined at, what is the day you joined upper line, Ted? Uh, like January. January of this year? Mm -hmm. Great. January, let's say it's January 15th. I think that's right. At 1 in the morning. Just to make it easy on ourselves. And so this is kind of tedious, right, to uh, update your database like this. This just takes way too long. I mean, it works, it's fine, but the problem is that like doing something like this would require a ton of manual labor. Now, fortunately, this is not how you will do it 99% of the time, but to set some dummy data up, this is a very useful way to go in and interact with your database. Now, if we save this, we should then have two different documents, one right here, one right here. Make sure all of these keys are the same in all of your documents, because if they're not, you're going to get some weird errors, and we'll, have, we'll debug them. And it usually happens. I usually typo one of those and have to go and debug it. But just make sure you have two documents at least right here. Now, once you've done that, we're going to get those documents from the database and display them on the screen. So we have two different students. We want to save them, or we save them in the database. We want to get them from the database and display them in our app. Here's how you do that. Are you ready? In your React project, we're going to go to the app.js, and I'm actually going to delete everything in here. I'm just going to press Control A, and I'm going to click Delete. We're going to write it from scratch. Yes. We're going to write everything from scratch. You cool with that? Great. So we're going to say import React from React. I want you to get in the habit of doing this a lot. Import React from React. Make sure that React is capital right there. Capital R. And then we're going to say class app extends React dot component. And we're going to give it a render method. That render method is just going to return some JSX. Is going to have a div with a class name equal to app. And don't worry if I'm going too fast for you. I'll stop in a little bit. And then we're going to export default app. Inside here, we're going to make an h1 called upper line students. And then we're going to save. And when we refresh this, or when we run npm start here, we should see that our app has now been updated. And this will no longer be our application. It should now just be an H1 that says upper line students. If I click refresh, there it is. That's all we should have. If that's what you have, you're good. If you don't have that yet, we'll come around and fix your bugs real quick. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the state of our application. So we're going to say state equals students and we're going to set it equal to null. So there's nothing inside there. And notice equals is a colon if you're not looking up at the screen. Yes, this should be an object. It should look like an object where the students key is set to null. And what we're going to do is as soon as this component mounts to the screen, we're going to go get all the data from Firebase, and we're going to update this students part to include all the students from our database. Now to do that, how do you tell a component to, to do something as soon as it mounts to the screen? Does anyone remember? Component did mount. Yes. Did mount. There's something called component did mount. Now what component did mount will usually do 
is it will run as soon as this app component gets put on the screen. Does that sort of make sense? So if we run console.log mounted in here and we save this, we should be able to see the mounted string printed to the console as soon as I pop this into a new browser. Now if we do this and we pop it in a new browser and I click inspect, I should see that as soon as I click refresh, mounted. We see mounted appear as soon as this upper line students h1 gets posted to the screen. Now instead of just saying console.log mounted, we want to go use the Firebase database to get all that information from Firebase. You cool with that so far? Here's how we do that. Are you ready? Inside the firebase.js file, we're going to export default an object containing with the database equal to the database and the auth equal to auth. So that whenever we import them, we'll import an object like this with the DB and the auth, which is equal to how we authenticate users with Firebase and how we access the Firestore database. So this is going to be how we access everything. Now if you export default these two things, what you can do is, you in, in fact you don't have to export default, you can just say export these, but I'm going to say export default. We say module to export, so there's a bunch of different ways to do that, but this is a pretty simple way as well. Cool with that so far? Now if you export them, we can import them into our app.js file and then use the database to query for our data. So all you need to do is save this file and then in your app.js we're going to import the DB from firebase.js. So we're going to say import db auth from dot slash services slash firebase like that is that cool oh, and, that should, should be in the and this means hey we have access to our firebase oh, database okay, inside our app.js file now by doing this we can actually run database commands inside the component did mount file so we can say database dot collection and we want to get all of our students. Now what this does is it creates a reference to the students collection. So remember that folder of students where we just created a document for each student? Inside here we say hey go get that folder of all the students by saying dot get. I like to line them up nicely. So this says, hey database, go find the collection of students and get all of the files inside that collection. And then as soon as the data has come back, we want to do something with it. Now the data comes back as something called a snapshot. And this is kind of funky. So it comes back as a snapshot and we want to take that snapshot and we want to do something with the snapshot. And in case there's an error, we want to catch the error by console.logging it. Just so we, we can see if we did something wrong. Now this part right here is probably kind of a little bit new to you. You might not have seen something like this before. But if you remember from our Axios lesson, this might look similar to getting data from an API because that's essentially what we're doing. Except it has a different kind of syntax. Now this right here, like what you do with a snapshot is going to be a little interesting, so I'm going to pause for a second, let you copy this down, then we're going to talk about it. Cool? So I'm just going to console.log the snapshot, and then we're going to see if I messed up. So I think I did make an error here. Let's just find out. Um, I'm going to refresh this. To save. Oh, did I forget to save? Yeah. Oh, I did save. But I did get an error here. It says DB is not exported from services Firebase. Um, and that actually, you can just do this, export const auth and export const db, then you can export default Firebase itself. That's actually the better way to do it. Um, so my apologies on messing that up, but 
that should fix your problem. And it does. Cool with that so far? Um, so we're exporting the auth constant. We're exporting the database constant. And we're default exporting the whole Firebase library if we need to use it for something else. You can export default one thing, but you can actually export anything, any number of things you want from an individual file. But the default exported here is only Firebase. And so then in your app, when you do this, we're saying, hey, I don't want to export the default. I want to export these individual constants from that file. And so when we console.log this, if you refresh this, you should now see this query snapshot thing, which tells you a few things about your database. One tells you all the docs in your database. We have two documents in there. Cool. It also tells you if whether or not it's empty. Is it empty? No, false. There's a query like, hey, well, how did we get this? And there's a thing called size. There's two things in there. Now, yours might be different depending on how many documents you have in your collection. Can we so, get a thumbs up? How many people can? Now, a, a nice way to do this is to take this snapshot and to say, hey, for each item in there to get the data. And then let's just make an array here so you can see how this works. Let's make a variable called students and make it an array. And then we will loop over the snapshot. We'll say, uh, I think it's snapshot dot for each document. We will say, let, let's say const data equals doc dot data. And then we will say students dot push the data. And then as soon as that's done, we will say this dot set state students is equal to the students array. And hopefully that will give you a working application where you can now get all of the students from the database into your state. So what we've done here is this snapshot of the database grabbed every document in the students collection. It gets all of them. As soon as it goes to the database and gets them, it returns the snapshot. We say, hey, for each document in the collection of students, I want you to get the data from that document. Once I have that data, I want to push it into the students array here so that it adds each student to this array. Then as soon as that's done, we set the state up here of students. Instead of being null, we set it to our new students array. Yes, you have a question, Ryan? Yeah, can you not push things into a constant? Is that no, you can't reset the constant to a new, you can't initialize it to a new variable but you can push items into it. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Um, now, if we do that, we should then be able to go into our HTML, into our JSX, and make all those students appear on the screen. And so I'm gonna do that really quickly, and then I'm gonna wrap up this lesson. So in here, I'm going to create an open and close squiggly, and I'm gonna say, this.state.students and we're just saying, hey, if this.state.students exists, then I want to say this.state.students.map over each student and we're going to return a div that contains the individual student information. This part's a little crazy. So if you're like a little lost right now, don't worry. You're going to get a lot of practice doing this. I assume at some point you make a component that would display the data. Exactly. Rather than, rather than do this, we would yeah. probably make an actual component. You're yeah. absolutely right. But if we just do that, we should see the name of all of our students appear there. And I see Jeff and Ted, which means that all of my, and here, let's just do student name. And let's also put the student.age. And then we'll say graduated student dot graduated. And we should now be able to access the database and get a bunch of, oh, we probably want to stringify that, huh? 
turn that into a string. Cool. And so at this point, we now have a way to access our database and get all of the users in our database and get the information about them. Um, and this is actually what makes Firebase so great, is that you can get all the data from your app and then use it and display it whatever way possible. So if you want to set up a store uh, and sell some items from your store, if you want to set up like a chat room and you can store all the messages in your database, you can store pretty much anything in your Firebase database and then access them exactly the same way we just did right here. So if this seems a little crazy and you miss some of this code, don't worry. I'm going to paste all this into Slack, but this is really all you need to get started with a database and React. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm going to come around and fix your errors also, Tad and I, and then we're going to take a break for a little bit. Is that cool?